Well, that's good. Okay, so let so, me ask you a question. Okay, we've been on sports almost an hour. So I know that you're usually your inside info is on WWE, and I'm sure you have some, but what do you know of? Because the only person I really listen or even respect is Davy Boy Meltzer, a gin and juice in Meltzer. Uh uh, some guy, a guy I know you love and cherish mer- very much, and also, uh, or somebody like Conrad. Other than that, I don't give a f- about anybody. I don't care or I don't know. But I guess Meltzer was reporting that, and do you know anything about this? That there was some, that there was some sort of problem between CM Punk and maybe what's the Cowboy's Ad, Ad, name? Hangman Page. Adam Page and maybe even Tony Khan. Do you know anything about that? And do you know anything about MJF's situation? Oh, yeah. I mean, I knew the MJF situation from the very beginning, from the um, from the guy who brought, brought him over for, to England for signings in between all this. Uh, yeah, the MJF situation is, is the work, like it has been from the start. Yeah, like, but, but if it's a bro, but, but, bro, but if but it's what, a work, what, what, why are they waiting how, so how, long? Right. This you is know, not this a is good like, work. Yeah. Because this is how they want to do it. Like, because they're trying to, they're trying to, find a way to make that their, their, their thinking is that it's more believable by doing it this way if you if you put the guy onto television and then you try and uh, blatantly capitalize on it being hot it's it's weird they put themselves they're, they're they're outworking themselves in a way because the uh, the reason why people do a hot angle and then even if it's a shoot angle and then throws the person back on tv the next week and the next week we've seen it with uh with Punk in the Summer of Punk. We saw it with the WWE tried to do with Edge and Matt Hardy, if you remember. Right, so like, they're trying to be different to say, okay, it isn't your typical angle. Yeah, but, but they they're need just, numbers they're, right they're, now, though. They've, they've got the Saps. They've got Saps and Meltzer, who who are friends with um, with Tony Khan, who have a relationship with him at least, uh, and are turning around and also telling you that it's a work. That's never happened before. So we are in a... That, is, that is true. That is true. Now they're using the dirt riders to help them out with this. Like, exactly. you know what? Help us out so they the people will believe this. Yeah, but I think in a way, I, I, I think it's a good idea. But at the same time, I feel that you're significantly um, over putting too much weight into the reach of the dirt sheet riders. And you're also only tapping into your existing audience. It seems like everything is done within the same, within, within the same people. Like, I, I would be looking more at using this angle to to grow, whereas that you, you're doing this attitude error type angle, this, this reality-based angle, which is different from everything on the show, which is just wrestling after wrestling after wrestling, and WWE are doing now wrestling after wrestling after wrestling, despite the fact that this Triple H, these three, four weeks are being praised incredibly and, uh, and being massively overrated by people. Um yeah, I mean, th- this was a chance to do something different. But what you did instead is you doubled down on the dirt sheets and you doubled down on your core audience and you tried to make the most important thing by convincing your audience that this was real for no reason um, other than to other than to try and do it. And then also use the dirt sheets to double down because with, a the- with the theory being, OK, if this was if this wasn't a shoot, then Dave would tell me it wasn't or, or, or Sean Sapp, Ross Sapp would tell me it wasn't. But instead... They're like verifying the fact that MJF has heat and he's going to walk out and he's trying to leave and he wants to go WWE. Like anybody that wants to go WWE doesn't publicly ever acknowledge that they want to go. To well, WWE. let me just well, say this. I'm sure that his return is going to be very special. If not, this is really going to be a <laughs> heavily criticized angle. So far, I'm not getting it. I'm not liking it either. Right. But what's going on with Punk and you need uh, all uh, you need all hands on deck and MJF should be back. What was your question? Just go and my bad. Hangman Page and Punk, you know anything about that? Um yeah, I mean I, I knew about like something at the at the time, but as far as look, as far as I understood, like everything was like resolved. And I feel and I don't know this, but I, I just feel because I know the first part to be correct that there was there was a resolution in order for them to work together for for the rest of the program because there was a resolution then i believe that they are now again using the dirt sheets and using these using this to to put this story out there i think they're putting the seeds down for, I, I don't i don't mind it though it's interesting the, it's like on a, show, on a show that's like on a, on a show that's like pretty cookie cutter where it's just like match after match after 14 minute match with minute minute promos to you know, pr- promote the matches. 
this is you know when when people are outside the box talking about outside the box things, I'm 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 not you know I'm I'm not going to be critical of that. I, I I'm interested in it, which is why we're asking you about it. If you know, what you're like, but other than like what we know, it's like you know we we've, we've been on this all along. Punk is not like the most well liked guy in the business. He has considerable fan. He went on mute. I think he yeah they. Uh- <laughs> He's got a lot of fans, you know, so it's like he carries a lot of weight in the business, but it's like he's been problematic backstage behind the scenes and stuff like that. You know, he's just like he's he's got an ordinary attitude. He's got like he he wants to be the top guy. You know, he he literally like likes to go, he goes into business for himself, you know, and stuff. So it's like I, I, I think it's interesting that this is getting out there because like, you know, bro, let me tell you something. The heel punk is more interesting on that show than the babyface version. Oh, yeah. absolutely. But, I, but I, I don't think we should like we should think that it's being put out there by by accident or it's a or it's a genuine leak. I feel, and this is this this should be the soundbite from this piece of the show, and we should keep this. Um, in in twelve months' time, or even six months' time, we're going to be looking we're, we're we're looking at the seeds being planted now for CM Punk to be the number one heel at that company, and MJF mm-hmm. and MJF being the top babyface. Right. And then that's where we're going to be in six months' time, and that's what they're doing right now, and they're using the dirt sheets. And they're using the the reality based a- aspect of it to, to 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 convince people. And you've already seen it on Twitter. Everybody's by everybody's bitten, and they're saying, "Oh, punks are can he still a can?" They they're pulling up the promo with Triple H and saying, "Oh my God, Triple H was right all along." And this guy fights with every single company like that. He's, he's difficult everywhere, whatnot, etc. Et next next week is the place where they're they're going to the show, and he's got a world title match, and the building that he walked out. On the company, isn't like it, it's all that that's got to be playing into like they know that his like he punk knows what's going on. Isn't you know, it so Mox- I, Moxie's hometown next week? Yeah, not? but it's a, but it's a town where he walked out. He where punk quit. Right. Okay. He, he walked out of the building. So it's like so. so there's the, bro. All the seeds are still being sown. Yo, what up? This is Conan, and I host Keeping It One Hundred. My co-host Disco Inferno, unfortunately. Well, I'd say you're my co-host. Listen, every Thursday here on Spreaker, we talk pro wrestling, sports, movies, music, TV, pop culture, and some politics. It's everything the rest of the pro wrestling podcasts are not. Tune in to hear myself, the superior one, educate and inform. Tune in to hear me bury Disco. That's very disrespectful. Join us every Thursday on Spreaker and keep it one hundred. Boom.